consoles are right around the corner, and I personally couldn't be more ambivalent towards them. I have no disrespect for those who have an interest in the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series Xbox One X, but I haven't seen anything that makes me particularly excited for the next consoles exclusively. Well, I did see that Unreal 5 tech demo, and oh boy, does it look party. But nothing that makes me want to ditch my PC. However, my interest was piqued with Xbox's online unveiling of some of their games they had coming to their new Totally Not a PC. They showed off a couple of sports games, a cool looking anime action game, some other okay looking games, a scary looking- <coughs> But they showed off all this stuff after they showed off the most interesting looking game of all. Bright Memory Infinite was the only game besides Scarlet Nexus that had me hooked from Jump Street. The game was visually stunning, the gunplay was great looking, then there were swords thrown into the mix. I am so sold. But seemingly, I would just have to wait until it found its way onto PCs. But then I started to hear from others that the previous iteration, Bright Memory, has already been in development for some time. So that was interesting, but then, coincidentally, it popped up on Steam's front page for like 8 bucks one day. What a no-brainer! And after going through the hour or so of the game it gives you twice now, I felt very conflicted about what I had experienced. And I already feel bad for making you guys wait so long for the next video, I figured I'd give you a little something extra while you wait. So, here we go. Bright Memory was originally dubbed Episode 1, because the creator thought that he would be unable to find a sustainable way to fund the game after the initial launch. What was released became Bright Memory, a first-person action shooter developed almost entirely by one guy. Sorry for the pronunciation. Zen Jiang Shen founded his own team, FYQD. I have nothing but the utmost respect for someone who has the talent and drive to create games like this in their own free time all by themselves. Masterpieces like Dust and Elysian Tale and especially Icy deserve so much love and support it's unreal. Seriously, side note, if you like action games and haven't played Icy yet, go buy it now. You can even get it on the Switch, it's amazing. Anyway, back on track. Using the Unreal 4 engine, this man sought out to make his own stamp on the gaming industry. And if we're going to start somewhere, let's start with looks. I think it looks great. My RTX 27 sporadically has trouble running it on max settings with ray tracing turned on, but sometimes it doesn't. When the RTX setting is turned on, I definitely don't reach 60 frames a second, but it sure does look nice. It's a little on and off depending. And I want to say it's because it's a little underdeveloped and not quite as polished as something like Control, which had ray tracing at the forefront of its marketing. But I also wonder if it's because every time I open the game, Steam VR opens up as well, which is also using resources. I read that this is due to a default setting in Unreal 4 that has yet to be disabled for this game, but I don't know if that's true. The ray tracing in general is still such an impressive effect that makes the environments look very cool. The reflective elements it gives surfaces looks amazing, but I almost want to say it's too much. Like, there are so many white lights on screen a lot of the time, it can become cluttered, and that's without these distracting pop-ins you'll surely see. But it's a nice looking game overall. And the in-game animations are great for the most part. Like, when you're reloading or grappling somewhere, it looks great. But some of the cutscene-esque animations are a little on the weak side, or they come off as just undercooked. It's her! Don't let her get away. What the f is that? The enemies themselves look pretty good too. Some are very tall and intimidating, and they have very distinct designs which play into where their weak points are. It's typically some kind of face, though. But now that we're here, I think it's time to talk about the most disappointing aspect of this game for me the combat itself. Okay, I probably say it in every video, but I love action games for lots of different reasons, and you can watch pretty much any video from season two onwards to see what I mean exactly. 
But the gist of it is, I love action games that are very heavy-handed with defensive options for the player to master alongside your offense. With Bright Memory Infinite's trailer, I saw many staples of action games, like dodges and parries, but I was surprised to see that it's far more lacking in Bright Memory. You do have a dodge, but that's as far as defensive options go for you. The dodge doesn't even work as well as I would hope for it to. You can only dodge left, right, and backwards, which, I should point out, is much better on a controller as opposed to a mouse and keyboard. With a mouse and keyboard, shift is used to activate your sprint and activate a dodge, but it gets a little wonky when you need to activate a sprint and end up doing a dodge instead, or vice versa. On a controller, sprinting is activated with the typical Call of Duty fashion of clicking the left analog stick. This feels much more natural to the combat loop than the keyboard scheme. Being able to have full analog control allows better precision for maneuvering around enemies and reliably timing dodges. But aiming up and down and all around like you'll be doing is a nightmare with a controller, and is best on a mouse for me, but that's a no-go. Now, this could be mitigated on the native PC control scheme if the game supported custom key bindings, but for some reason, it doesn't. It's apparently coming in the release of Infinite, but it's a frustrating obstacle for early adopters. So overall, the defensive side of the encounters aren't what I would want. And I wish I could say that the offensive side does more, but there really isn't much going on with your moveset. It's a first person shooter at its core, so it's got the usual gunplay you would expect. There's an automatic weapon, there's a pistol, and a really fun shotgun that shoots as fast as you can pull the trigger. Again, with the restricted controls, it's lame that I have to use the numeric keys to swap weapons instead of my scroll wheel like I'm used to. But hey, what can you do? There's nothing to really say about the weapons other than that. They're just guns. If you squeeze me, I make bad people go away! The powers you have are the more interesting part. You have a pulse ability which sends smaller enemies into the air and does damage. You can also pull your sword out and send these slice shockwaves to the enemies in the air or do a heavy slice or an AOE slam. You have a grapple move that pulls you towards enemies on the ground and in the air as well. This was the coolest part of the combat for me. You could pull yourself towards the enemies in the air and your slices keep you elevated. But the way the enemies fall back down to the ground so quickly, it's just not as fun as it could be. And you're left wide open if you try to go in for an aerial attack on a boss. As it stands, the most effective way to deal with enemies is just to run away and then unload a clip and then run away and then unload a clip again and then run away. It gets to be so monotonous because the larger boss enemies can't really be stunned. You just have to run away and unload on them from a distance. There are ability upgrades that you can unlock, but for some reason, my mouse cursor isn't able to go down that far in the menu. I have no idea why it does this either. It makes it to where I can't access upgrades and some other things in the menu. And yes, I tried to access it with a controller, but it still doesn't work. It's on the same cursor system as, say, Destiny or Assassin's Creed or something. I think I read some articles that pointed me to removing some aspect ratio or resolution restrictions on my computer settings, but I didn't feel like potentially messing something up. It's really frustrating that this is a problem in the first place. I don't know why I can't simply navigate the options menu like it's a normal menu. Because that would be too easy, I suppose. Ugh. You see, I'm the kind of player who likes getting in enemies' faces, countering their attacks to make my own openings, and it looks like that will be coming in Bright Memory Infinite, but it's not here. Attacks that enemies throw out are already telegraphed really well, but there's nothing to do with this information but just run away from them. And I also personally think this game would be better suited as a third person game, but that's just me. I find that my hitboxes are a little less clear when I can't see my body but that could just be a me problem again. But what isn't a me problem is placing these huge bosses that can absolutely wreck you in a small arena with lots of little pillars in the arena that you can get stuck on. The last boss of the episode one demo is this giant monster with an admittedly cool design, but about halfway through his fight, enemies show up, which is already a no-no for me. If you need to add smaller minions to your boss battle that have no other function besides harming the player, you need to make the boss itself a better fight. But anyway, once the enemies show up, it's not uncommon for you to get pushed into one of these corners by the map and blocked by the boss and the enemies to where you can't move. And you can't dodge through enemies 
or the little pillars in the arena, so that's a death right there. And this happened so many times to me, it was frustrating. This might be alleviated if you could use the different keys to say, oh, I don't know, map the dash to a separate button as the sprint, and then dash forward. But no, you get trapped and killed because you didn't just run backwards in a circle so the enemies would follow you in a conga line for you to just mow down. I had very high hopes for this game, and I was a little disappointed. I admittedly am still through the roof for Infinite, but only because the trailers and videos have seemed to fix almost every issue I have with the combat. I don't plan on judging trailer footage of a game that hasn't even been released, so we'll just have to see. And I know I'm being hard on this game, but I'm doing so because I have the full intention of reviewing Infinite when it comes out. So, I want to voice my grievances now, so it'll be easy to contrast the positive changes that I'm sure will be made. And again, I'm so excited for the updates the full game will bring. It looks like such an immediate winner. I've even gone through this small demo twice now, and I plan on going through a third time because I got an extra scene after that second time. It's worth getting it at a discounted price now if you're interested in Infinite, because the upgrade will be completely free when the game comes out. Even if it's got some bugs, glitches, issues with functioning as a game, graphical oddities, it's worth it on the promise of a good game alone. So I would recommend picking it up if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching and also for being so patient. The big video that will assuredly be the largest one we've ever done will be coming next for sure. So you have that to look forward to. Then after that, I'll be doing a video on Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time since it won the poll. And also those other ideas will be turned into videos at some point, hopefully. So don't worry if your vote didn't win. And also, 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 Nick, Elliot, and I have recorded some admittedly funny Warzone matches, and I'll be putting those up on our Let's Play channel soon. And the car. Oh, don't leave me! Don't leave me! <laughs> <laughs> then come on. Did you get your well, loadout? Come here! Did you get your loadout? Yes, go, 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 go! <laughs> oh, fuck! Missile locking! <laughs> Nick, get out! <laughs> So feel free to check those out if you're interested. But anyway, I appreciate you for watching. So thanks for stopping by and have a great day. Yay! There you go. Good job, good job, Kelly.